All right. I know many are still joining, um, but we are at the top of the hour, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, just want to make sure that we are recording. Okay. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining today. My name is Bernadette Lim. I am the program manager of the telehealth immersion program and today I am joined by my colleagues Stacy Lloyd, director of digital health and Michael Tuddy, group vice president of professional satisfaction and practice sustainability. Today is a informational session on the telehealth immersion program and we are so excited to share with you background information, context on how this program came to be. We will also be covering program logistics, including uh, what the program is and how to get involved. We also will be sharing a unique opportunity for state and specialty societies that might be joining us today um, to join us as a collaborator. We also will be talking through um, a grant opportunity as well um, for those that might be interested. Before getting started, I just wanted to uh, call out the Q&A and chat function at the bottom of your screen. Um, if at any time you have a comment or a question, please feel free to type it down below. This is an information session, so we want to make sure that we answer any and all questions you might have, and we'll reserve time at the end um, to answer those. Um, this presentation is being recorded um, and will be made available on our website following today's event. We have a brief disclaimer here that this webinar is for informational purposes only. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Michael, to open today's session with a welcome. Thank you, Bernadette, and welcome everyone. I'm excited that everyone is here today to learn more about the Telehealth Immersion Program. This really started as an effort that uh, goes back a, a few years uh, when telehealth was still something of an idea, something new. It's hard to imagine how far we've progressed with COVID, but fortunately we were thinking about this issue uh, long before the pandemic kicked off. And I remember having a conversation with uh, Dr. Libby, a pediatrician who was talking about introducing telehealth into his practice and that it was actually much more complex than just turning on a video camera and all the issues that you had to think about of integrating that. So we kicked off with a telehealth initiative and I'm very grateful for the efforts of the Physicians Foundation with uh, the president, uh, Dr. Price and the CEO, Bob Seligson, who supported this effort and then the collaboration of the Texas Medical Association, the Florida Medical Association, the Massachusetts Medical Society. And we recruited practices uh, at the be end of 2019, beginning of 2020, to help them through the uh, introduction and implementation of telehealth into their practices. And then in the spring of 2020, COVID happened. And suddenly this topic that was so, sort of interesting, something you wanted to implement into your practice became all of uh, the rage as it was so important uh, to interact with your uh, patients as uh, the pandemic kicked off and this really exploded and all that content. We moved all those practices obviously to implement uh, telehealth, but we learned a lot. But in a post-pandemic world, telehealth is not going away. Uh, it's really uh, going to become an integral part of the practice. So how do we help uh, physicians make sure that it becomes a successful, integrated part of care delivery? And that's why I'm so excited for this program and the continued collaboration with the Physicians Foundation, the Texas Medical Association, Florida Medical Association, and Massachusetts Medical Societies, but also expanding this opportunity across organized medicine uh, so that we can support more physicians across the country. So we're excited to provide more details about this program. Looking forward to collaborating with all of you as we support physicians in integrating telemedicine into their practice. So without further ado, I turn it back to the team to talk about this program we'll be launching. Thank you, Michael. Uh, great opening remarks. And we're also very grateful for your ongoing support of these efforts too. Um, hi, everyone. Again, my name is Stacey Lloyd. Um, I'm the Director of Digital Health and Operations here at the AMA and really excited to be kicking this program off today. I'm going to share a little bit more of the why behind the Telehealth Immersion Program um, before Bernadette dives into some of the details. 
So Michael had mentioned our telehealth initiative and how we were super well positioned to support the explosion of telehealth at the onset of, of the pandemic. But the AMA also had many other efforts in development and was able to also quickly pivot um, to expand resources and support physicians, practices, and health systems across the country um, to implement and use telehealth. These efforts included research, advocacy, uh, being able to leverage our AMA Physician Innovation Network to convene conversations across the country on telehealth, um, new coding guidance, how to manage chronic disease virtually, and much more. And really all of this amazing work and collaboration across the AMA has allowed us to develop programs like the Telehealth uh, Immersion Program. So as we all know, um, next slide please. Uh, so as we all know, due to you know, patient safety needs of COVID-19, all of the emergency waivers from a policy um, perspective happened and telehealth adoption was able to really accelerate over this last year. Part of our research included a collaboration with the COVID-19 Healthcare Coalition's Telehealth Impact Study, which involved a claims analysis of telehealth utilization in addition to a few other survey efforts. But as you can see here, we saw a huge spike um, and then it has leveled off a bit as things have started to open back up. This is just the latest data, um, but anticipate this being updated as time goes on. And the industry continues to be very interested in how telehealth will continue to be leveraged beyond the pandemic. More patients and physicians than ever before have had an opportunity to use telehealth as a tool for care delivery over the last year. And with that comes a lot of innovative uh, ways telehealth can be used or has been used. And it also provides an opportunity for us to really learn from these experience, uh, experiences. So while maybe you might be asking why we need a telehealth immersion program with so many practices and organizations already using telehealth, Many implemented telehealth very quickly and are now interested in optimizing, sustaining, and really expanding those efforts. Next slide. So we also surveyed um, participants as part of the telehealth initiative last year to better understand what they wanted to continue using telehealth for beyond the pandemic. Uh, we gleaned a lot of insights around what was working well through this survey, um, as well as what physicians wanted to continue to be able to leverage telehealth for. Um, and then future anticipated use. We saw very significant interest in continued use for chronic disease, which is not surprising, but also some acute care, mental behavioral health and medical management um, use cases as well. And you'll hear more about this in a few minutes, but this is certainly a reason for why the telehealth immersion program curriculum includes deep dives into clinical focus areas. Next slide. We also um, had the opportunity to talk to physicians to get some additional insights towards the end of the telehealth initiative formal kind of cohort um, at the end of last year. And again, we really wanted to explore how the program went, uh, what we could do better in the future as it relates to programming and how they were thinking about the future of telehealth and practice. A major takeaway was that they wanted and, wanted and believed telehealth would be here in the future but that it might look a little bit different. Um, and some of those key themes included wanting a mix of virtual and in-person uh, visit options, interest in continuing using telehealth and primarily felt that it was uh, rationale for that was really because it was important to patients for access and convenience. Um, Needing an ongoing path to payment um, is still critically important. And I'll just you know layer in here with a telehealth initiative, um, having those kind of on the ground, real world stories to draw from really was impactful uh, with a lot of our advocacy efforts last year in terms of getting telehealth coverage um, and payment for these services. And then they also expressed an interest in need to expand how virtual care is delivered. So really being able to augment those virtual visits, um, you know, create uh, sustainable workflows and things like that. So with that, we want to ensure that physicians feel empowered and prepared to continue offering telehealth and virtual care now and beyond the pandemic. Um, really wanting to successfully get to a, a point of digitally enabled care. Um, and that is why we developed the immersion, the telehealth immersion program. It, it really is designed to support 
um, the effective optimization and scale of telehealth and virtual care that works for physicians and patients. So I am excited to hand it over to my colleague Bernadette to walk us through the program in a little bit more detail. Great, thanks Stacey. So program logistics. Um, first, just wanting to start off with what is the telehealth immersion program? So as Michael alluded to, this program really is building off of the telehealth initiative that the AMA led last year together with the Physicians Foundation. And this program is designed to help guide physicians, practices, health systems, administrative leaders, implement, optimize, sustain, and scale telehealth. So wherever you might be in your telehealth journey, we're hoping that this program can provide you with the support needed um, to help further your organization's strategies around telehealth. The purpose of this program is to one, provide available education on telehealth, two, build the evidence base supporting telehealth use and providing patient care, and three, facilitate a network of collaboration and sharing of best practices. From our experiences last year, um, we know that many practices quickly adopted telehealth within weeks in some cases. And there was a lot of great lessons learned uh, that we hope that this, this program will provide um, a network to be able to share that information with one another. In addition to covering the fundamentals of telehealth, this program will also offer deep dives into clinical best practices. We will also talk through integration with other healthcare technologies like remote patient monitoring solutions, um, the impact of telehealth as it relates to elements of the quadruple aim, and we'll also explore opportunities for virtual care expansion. This program um, is completely mission driven uh, by the AMA. There are no registration fees or costs to participate. How to, how to participate in the telehealth immersion program. On our registration page, you may notice that we've integrated a variety of learning formats. And I just wanted to take a moment today to talk through each of these different formats so you have a little bit of a sense of what these will entail and what you can expect when participating. The first are webinars, which are you know, pretty traditional. These are 60 minute right, didactic lecture presentations. We invite an expert lecturer to present on a topic and then we reserve time at the end for some Q&A. Um, the second type of uh, learning format we offer is peer-to-peer -peer sessions. Um, so this really is an interactive session offering deep dives into virtual care use cases. Um, if you're familiar with Project Echo, these sessions are somewhat modeled after that type of, that type of virtual experience. Um, and what we do is we first start off with about a 30 minute didactic presentation, again, on a particular topic. And then we invite two organizations to present case-based presentations um, on how it's working in their practice and, and what they're doing already. And they have an opportunity um, to interact with several experts, maybe three to five experts that we invite um, to just have dialogue and a conversation around um, some of the innovations that they've already uh, employed um, or maybe other ideas of what to potentially consider. Um, so again, from our experience last year in the telehealth initiative, we were hearing, hearing loud and clear interest from groups to be able to really interact with one another. And we're hoping that this type of session will be able to provide that. Um, you know, and this is a great opportunity to, if you are an organization interested in participating, um, please reach out and let us know and we'd be happy to connect with you. Mini boot camps are more of an intensive session, a lo longer in length, it's a mini conference, um, and will include a mix of didactic presentation, peer-to-peer -peer sessions, um, and really also is an opportunity for us to engage all of those that are participating in the program. So you'll have an opportunity to network, network, network with one another. Um, we'll facilitate some breakout sessions during those events as well. Um, and uh, we will be hosting our first boot camp um, this coming September, and we'll be providing more information in the weeks to come. The next virtual uh, session is online discussion. So this is also pretty standard. This is a 10 day asynchronous discussion on a specific topic and uh, will be hosted on our physician innovation network. The online discussions will typically, typically dovetail a webinar presentation or a peer to peer session. 
um, and really give you an opportunity to continue the conversation with experts that were participating in that. So maybe you have specific questions. Um, so that'll be a, a time for that. And then all of these resources that we make available through the program will be available on our website in a comprehensive library. Um, so I'll point that out here in just a minute. Um, but really, if you're interested in navigating the program um, on your own time at your own pace, um, we also we will have an opportunity for that too. One other, um, one other way to participate that isn't listed on here that I wanted to make mention of is uh, the survey. So we also plan to administer a survey in the fall um, and really highly encourage all of you to participate. Uh, this really helps us assess telehealth use acro across county, state, or specialty. Um, and just thank you in advance for, for your participation in that. All right, when are the telehealth immersion sessions? These eight sessions are currently available on our webpage for you to register for. Uh, we are all here today on the program introduction webinar um, and then have several others coming up and certainly more sessions coming soon. So the next session after today will be held on May 25th. This will be covering measuring the value of virtual care, which Stacey will talk a little bit more about in just a moment. But really, this is talking through our return on health framework um, that we will be putting out soon. And following that webinar, we will be hosting a virtual discussion, again, on our Physician Innovation Network. And on June 10th will be our first clinical case study. So that peer-to-peer -peer session focused on mental and behavioral health, um, telehealth. Um, so if you are interested in joining that, uh, we highly encourage you to. Um, that will also be hosted in collaboration with our Improving Health Outcomes Department at the AMA. On Ju June 24th, we will be hosting an event on healthcare technology and the human connection. This will be led by Dr. Adrian Boise, Chief Experience Officer at the Cleveland Clinic. And following that session on July 15th, we will host another peer-to-peer -peer session um, telehealth for hypertension. And again, if you're interested in participating in that, please feel free to reach out. On June, July 26th, we will be hosting a session in collaboration with the AMA's Continuing Medical Education Department focused on telehealth educators playbook. This will talk through ways that we could integrate telehealth into the medical education curriculum, as well as ways to engage medical students in the, tele, in the, in the virtual care environment. And on August 10th, we will be hosting a webinar together with the AMA's um, Center for Health Equity focused on implementing innovative solutions with an equity lens um, and have plans to also uh, open up a virtual discussion following that event as well. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, we'll also be hosting a mini boot camp in September um, and there certainly will be more programming to come. So please, please, please check back on our website frequently. Here's just a screenshot of where you can locate all of the events to register. So you'll see here on the left, um, we have a 2021 events tab. Uh, that's where you can register for all the events that I just mentioned. And on the right, um, there's a curricul curriculum guide. This is our library of content um, that we will make available through the program as well as all of the program sessions. Um, so again, if you'd like to navigate at your own pace or access these um, on your own time, this is where you can find that as well. For those of you who might be joining us um, from a state or a specialty society or local society, um, we have a great opportunity for you to join us as a program collaborator. Um, so really our, our primary asks as being a collaborator is to one, promote the telehealth immersion program and, event, and events to your members, and also help us assist in administering a survey in the fall to assess telehealth use across the county, state, or specialty. And all of those results would be provided back to you um, following the survey. If you are interested in getting more involved, we certainly have more opportunities uh, if we, we're happy to promote any telehealth resources that you might be developing or offering, um, there's certainly lots of opportunities to engage your members in participating in the telehealth immersion program events, either serving as an expert um, or presenting case studies at virtual events. We also are happy to recognize you and your collaboration on our program website 
Um, we're currently building out a tab that will have a list of all of our collaborators, as well as all of the resources um, that you may, you may be offering. So um, this is just an opportunity for those that are interested and um, I'll include my contact information at the end uh, for you to reach out. We are so excited to be able to share that we already have um, 20 plus collab collaborators that have already reached out. These are just some, and we have some that are, are, have reached out even since we put the, together this presentation. So really, really looking forward to working with each and every one of you um, that are featured here and are excited for this list to continue to grow. And with that, I will turn it over to Stacy to talk through um, the Value of Virtual Care Framework and the Physicians Foundation Grant Opportunity. Thank you, Bernadette. Uh, and thank you to those organizations that have already signed up to support and collaborate on this, pro this program. We're really excited um, to be able to offer this and also work with everyone um, that is interested. Our, as Bern mentioned, Bernadette mentioned, our first official webinar in the Immersion Program will be on May 25th and focuses on the value of virtual care. Um, in this webinar, you'll get an overview of the AMA's return on health research that is actually launching next week and will be made um, available externally. So we will be sure to um, share a link to that report when it is out. This project really aimed to understand how various types of physicians, practices, health systems are currently experiencing and quantifying the value of virtual care and really does build off the AMA's digital health implementation playbooks by expanding on that content and doing deep dives um, around and providing specific guidance around how physicians and practices can measure success and make the business case for implementing and scaling digital health solutions, um, very specifically uh, telehealth, remote patient monitoring, and, and the like. Additionally, um, the explosion of telehealth uh, throughout COVID-19 really has exacerbated the need for assessing the impact of telehealth to ensure that access is continued for patients and physicians um, as it relates to different coverage payment and policy um, decisions uh, since we still are under the public health emergency. So really, you know, assessing and looking at the impact telehealth is making on various aspects of the quadruple aim and thinking about patient provider experience about outcomes about access um, will really be important as we continue to kind of make the case uh, for for those things to, to remain in place. This also um, tees up an additional opportunity on the next slide. In addition to our collaborator program, um, the AMA also will be continuing its work alongside the Physicians Foundation, as well as Texas Medical, Florida Medical, and Massachusetts Medical Society with the, with the telehealth initiative. And there is currently an RFP out for states interested in participating in the next cohort of TTI, as we like to call it, um, which will include, I think, kind of table stakes is participation in the immersion program and really promoting that across membership, as well as the survey distribution. Um, the telehealth survey distribution in the fall, but also um, is open for states to be um, that are interested in show commitment to supporting practices and measuring the value of their virtual care programs by leveraging the AMA's return on health framework and providing opportunities for physicians and practices to obtain CME or PICME. Um, credits for participation um, in this work. So the RFP is, is currently open through June 4th for those interested in applying. We've included a link and some contact information on this slide that will also be available um, after today's session. So please, if interested, um, reach out to myself, reach out to Danielle, um, Bernadette, we can all kind of share any additional insights around this grant opportunity. Um, and again, you can find more information on the website there as well. So uh, I think that wraps us up for the main portion. Oh, I missed it, sorry. Um, we also, um, you may have seen on the initial slide that our telehealth immersion program is really uh, a part of the, you know, AMA Steps Forward Innovation Academy, which helps physicians, care teams, healthcare leaders implement um, practice innovation strategies that promote joy in medicine, um, efficient use of technology, practice sustainability, and um, help providers, uh, physicians, provider organizations provide quality patient care. Um, as a part of the Steps Forward Innovation Academy, 
um, you will have access to the telehealth immersion program, but there are also other offerings within that group. So right now there is a Steps Forward webinar series that you can also um, sign up for, for various sessions uh, around as well. So for more information, um, feel free to check out stepsforward.org or um, email the, the link uh, at the email address below. All right, I think that officially wraps us um, for the content, the major content for this uh, webinar, but we are happy to answer any questions um, if there are some. Stacey, you have a question in the um, uh, in the Q and A. Q and A, Leslie, are these sessions for state medical societies, specialty medical societies, or for the practices that join the program? I would say all of the above. Um, we definitely are not limiting registration and participation in these sessions. I think they will be informational for all, but definitely our target audience would be physicians, care team members, health healthcare leaders, um, practice managers, administrators um, that are really kind of doing uh, the work in either helping to implement and optimize telehealth in practice or for the, the clinicians that are providing services via telehealth. All right. Any, oh, we have some more. Um, is there any consideration to using this program to help create a telehealth specialty care network? Um, I haven't thought about that quite yet, but happy to have a conversation about that offline and and try to understand um, what that might look like. I think. You know, part of uh, our, um, even our peer-to-peer -peer type sessions, I think, are really to um, help support and, and um, have some of that dialogue in the specialty space. So i um, happy to talk about that and see if there's any opportunity for us to really kind of either co-create content or um, come together to, to build something like that um, in the future. Do practices who are interested sign up individual as individual physicians or is it organization registration to be a part of the program? Great question. Um, part of our collaborator program is really, and I'll, I'll be honest, we've had so much success with the, the telehealth initiative and it has just been such a pleasure to work with um, Texas and Florida and Massachusetts as part of the, the initiative. So we really um, targeted a lot of our initial outreach for the telehealth immersion program um, out to, to the state and specialty societies um, as a way to kind of continue that collaboration um, with other associations. But I would say, you know, for the individual webinars, the physicians can sign up individually, but from a collaborator perspective, we are really interested in collaborating with the state um, and specialty and county societies um, as a way to help us kind of get that out, disseminate that out to members um, and really just expand our reach. So a little bit of both. Okay, another question here. Can we get a copy of the presentation or will it be made available on the website? Yes, so we will make this available on the website and we'll send this out as well to all of those that registered. Yep. All right. Thank you, Dr. Libby, for the comment. Sorry. Stacy, you're exactly right. What we're trying to do here is really get content out to, to practicing physicians. And we really want to leverage the power of organized medicine to be able to get as broad a reach as we can by collaborating with as many state specialty and, and county medical societies that we can provide this content out. So we're looking for this large participation um, uh, from physicians to participate in the webinars, the information sharing sessions, because we think the more who participate and the more we can share, we can learn from each other. So we're trying to broaden this and, and also get that feedback from uh, the physician community. What additional content are they looking for? What additional problems are they facing that we collectively as organized medicine should be tackling? Some of those problems may be state issues, uh, local issues. Uh, some of them might be 
uh, where multiple states uh, in the AMA can collaborate on additional content. So it's a great opportunity to um, be relevant in getting content to our physician audiences across the country. And I do believe when organized medicine collaborates like we've been doing uh, on this previous telehealth initiative, we can really um, uh, uh, multiply the impact we can have for the physician audience. Agree, thanks, Michael. All right, we have a question uh, related to the grant program and Dr. Libby, I'm gonna unmute you to see you can answer this one. Uh, what are the ranges of grant awards for state medical associations under the program? I'm sorry, uh, say that again, if you would for me. Uh, Bernadette. Sure. What are the what's the range of the grant award for the state medical association? Okay. So um, basically, uh, the range is up to fifty thousand dollars, and if you uh, do access uh, the application form, you'll be able to discern how that can be applied. Um, this is really to support staff. We're hoping that most of the organizations do have some, uh, let's say, preparatory uh, resources for their physicians, but this is really to to make telemedicine a regular part of physician practice and to be able to capitalize on the moment uh, when people's interest is, uh, is most significant. Danielle, I also unmuted you. I noticed that you had your hand raised. Is there yeah, anything I just else you wanted I, to add? Sure, yeah, I just thought I would chime in that uh, as Dr. Libby said, it is up to $50,000 um, and it is for a one-year project period and happy to connect with folks if they have more questions about it, but in part it's, as Dr. Levy said, to go towards some staffing support and and the time that it would take to coordinate with practices, but also some of that um, that uh, value of, of telehealth uh, approach that you all talked about earlier. So um, meant to support the project and the staff time as well. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Dr. Levy. Great yeah, and I'll, I'll just add one more thing. I mean, the biggest thing for us um, is to help develop the resources for the state orgs, uh, to also help engage them in the way they understand data can be uh, uh, accessed, as well as uh, how practices can start to look at their processes and evaluate how effective telemedicine is for them. Uh, this is a big part of the future to be able to integrate this into regular practice, as well as to justify payment. Um, really big issues relative to uh, physician practice. Uh, if you can't sustain payment, uh, it's really going to be difficult and we need the data to support that. Wonderful. Well, while, you, while we have you, we have another grant question. Um, we are asked to consider offering a PICME activity for physicians. Is there a data reporting platform available for physician members to use, or does each state need to create the reporting platform for PICME participants? Stacey, do you want to take this one, actually? Yeah, happy to. Um, I think, you know, we were, I think some of the funds could be used to create that at the state level. Um, if you know, there is already um, a path to offering CME of some sort. If not, we can certainly identify either other ways to think about how that data can be collected or, um, you know, partner with other um, participating states or organizations to try to offer that um, as part of the program. So more to come there, but I think we can be a bit flexible. Um, it will just be uh, of interest to really understand kind of what the value and what data is being collected at the practice level to really measure success around virtual care. All right, any last call for questions? All right. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and end today's session. Um, if you have any questions or any, you know, if you reach out to us, if there's anything that comes to mind post this, um, our contact informations are available in the presentation, which we will be distributing after today's session. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day and look forward to your participation. Thanks thank all. You.